Hello, folks. It's another session of Theorycraft where Ben, that's me, and Jack, that's him, like to rant, rave, and just theorize on random nonsense. Sometimes it's sci fi, sometimes it's not, but for this week, we're going a bit old school. So, with the success that is Detective Pikachu, it gave a lot of nostalgia for a lot of people of my age group and Jack's who came up with loving all these random little creatures that had ridiculous powers. But there was also another fascinating show back in the 90s called Digimon, which is roughly what Pokemon was, but it had its own little spin on things where the creatures actually talked and they were more digital than they were physical. So we thought between the two of us, if they were to come across with the idea of making a live action version of Digimon, how would we write it? And that's where we are today. So, obviously this is all just a spitballing as usual, but if anyone is deciding to join us or wants to give their own opinions, more than happy to add it down in the comments below and we'll get back to it as soon as we can. So, shall we kick off then, Jack? Yeah, sure thing. Okay, doke. So... Between the two of us, we sort of came up with the idea that it could be a bit like Tron, where... Well, we spent about a good three hours writing yes. this thing. <laughs> yeah, we sort of, we were faffing around, because the hard part with Digimon was the fact that they didn't technically exist, even though they did. Well, it's just trying to place these digital monsters into a real life, like, physical world, but it's just how do you, how do you manifest that, you know? Exactly. And one of the main things that we came up with was sort of using the idea of Tron, where it was AI programming that gained sentience in some way, and thus involving, evolving, not involving, it evolving into the Digi world, and thus created the Digimon. Um, uh, so it's sort of like an experiment of sorts where. I'm trying to think. Would you say Japan would be the best place to have an AI experiment? or Because it well, was Japan where it came from originally. Well, we were toying with the idea of... Um, we're toying with the idea of Japan, but in uh, kind of a different way. Like, um, I remember we said about the whole uh, technology, about the possibility of, like, an alien spacecraft maybe uh, crash landing on in Japan in one of the mountains. And then, obviously, through some kind of testing and so on uh, with scientists and so on, it'd probably be shipped to the United States, but they probably specialize in that kind of thing. And then mm. gradually over time, some of the tech, which um, it kind of adds a little bit of like a facet, a little bit of fascination with um, some of the tech which we have now possibly might not have come from Earth and from what we've made in the future with games and uh, like with iPhones and so on. So essentially, the idea being that all technology that we know so well today isn't actually 100% human, but it's modified tech from an alien spacecraft is one concept. Yeah, so sort of like, sort of like we were going from like the, I think we were going from the early 1900s. Yes, and yes. We, yeah, and then gradually moving across into, uh, I think definitely the 90s is probably the best place to set uh, this whole thing because like kind of the game craze was taken off at that mm. time. Which we will lead into the whole beta testing and everything. That will lead into after. Yeah, so, I mean, like I say, it's two roughish ideas so far to try and introduce the concept of the Digimon. And uh, going from that, we... Obviously, the main bad guy has to be Devimon because I can never remember what all the types were, but I remember specifically that the main bad guy was a virus. Like his main thing was that he was trying to take over the entire digital world and the World Wide Web and therefore take over the entire planet. Yeah. Now, I leave that as the main antagonist plot and logic because there's no. It's Digimon. <laughs> yeah, there's, it's Digimon. Like the whole point is like you can't really add anything else to a digital type threat other than it taking over every bit of technology. Yeah. So, with that in mind. It's then trying to sort of add into the concept of how to bring them into the actual real world. And yeah, which I know we spent, so, we like came up with God knows how many ideas like, yeah. trying to make this happen. 
I mean, one thing is like you were saying about making it like a projector of sorts. So it's like three D holograms of things, and then there's like my theory where we could use it as perhaps three D printing or whatever. Like they actually manifest physically in some way, but then it's trying to. <sighs> Yeah, but then that's when we came up with the kind of things when I was trying to explain to you things about uh, tech, which never made it into like the public, things that were in beta testing, such as games, for example. Mm-hmm. So sort of um, introducing the concept of uh, these digital monsters that were created possibly for a game. And hence the reason why they were why they look the way they do is because they were uh, beta test of a maybe a dinosaur game or mm-hmm. uh, mutant game, something like that, which then got scrapped. And hence why they look the way they do. So that's something that you can do to kind of... uh, Justify uh, the looks. Yes. So it's more the idea that they don't naturally look like whatever it is they are. They just piggyback off the idea of default games that never saw the light of day. Which is quite an interesting concept. Because at least then it gives you a bit more of an idea of why they look so diverse. Yeah. Because I remember back in the original series, like there was so much randomness with the creatures, but it never fully made sense because there was no, there was quite a few that looked roughly like yetis, but they never really had mount. <laughs> but they never had. <laughs> it's a digital world. There's no such thing as snow. Why would you have yetis? Yeah, exactly. But um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Um, the idea of course like picking back in off the character games if they were to come into reality i said to you that we wouldn't want them to look fleshed out to look like what they're supposed to piggyback off i pinch the idea that they use in the comedy pixels where it looks slightly re- realistic but it's a pixelated version of it so it yeah, still gives it the gamey look because they were kind of like un- like underdeveloped like underdeveloped games hence why they yes. look all grainy and pixelated exactly so it gives it like the sort of digital look to it all but it still makes them seem interactive enough to be realistic yeah um and then and of then... course yeah, well we well we were saying about how Obviously, the idea is that we find the creatures in an abandoned room within a tech company that specialise in all this, where it's a room full of abandoned tech, which then leads into how the kids get the digivices. Because that was the main thing we were struggling with, was trying to justify how to give kids the digivices. Yeah, because what? Yeah, because um, I can't remember if it was you or me who came up with the prototype of... I think I came up with it. Uh, having the um how are you going to explain the digivices and it could have been the first ever um incarnation or the first uh beta test of like an apple watch yeah i'm sure it was your idea but that's the thing because in the original series it was just oh you've got a digimon and then the digivice came with it but like they never explained how one or the other came about it was just there Mm. But at least with like the room of abandoned tech, you could also do as like an Easter egg to other game tech, like a history of other used, unused tech or consoles, like the Google Glass, the Nintendo Power Glove, and other random tech that was advanced for what it was, but never saw the light of day because it was impractical. Yeah. But again, it's it's trying to make it all fit in piece by piece which is why we're here today because at least if anyone does end up watching us we can have their comments in the below and have a read through that yeah it's what you were saying uh, about the uh about the google glass um mm. for those for those of you who may not have heard of google glass then i don't blame you you probably haven't but google glass was basically <laughs> the it was a it was the concept of having basically you know when you see in films like glass, like glasses that have a computer uh, like on the inside of them, so it's like you're seeing a computer, like a projection. Mm. Yeah, so that's what what it was like, and that you could access uh, things all kind of like Facebook, Google, the internet, uh, all that just from your eyes. But then there was that whole uh, kind of conspiracy that uh, that maybe governments or maybe uh, tech companies were using it to spy on their buyers and so on. But it was in the beta testing. It barely worked. But it was tried out by uh, people like Prince Charles. It was tried out. By, I'm sure it was tried out by Mark Zuckerberg. I think back in the day. Wouldn't and, surprise me. 
Yeah, and it was like dealing with the whole idea of like projection, which is how like came up the idea of oh, could this be a way of projecting them into the um, into the physical world? And they had, I remember they it, like the product was so crap. Uh, people came up with a slogan for it, which I won't say exactly what it is, but it starts with glass, ends with hole. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so yeah, so I mean, at least with the idea of buggy tech, it makes it. A sort of more interesting concept that the tech could go wrong at any moment so it's more of a rush for time to try and stop the main bad guy which is devimon yeah. but the other thing as well is we were trying to justify the concept of the digivolving yeah because again that was a really loose sort of thing within the series itself because i it never made much sense to me because they had the baby version, they had the slightly po more powerful version, they had the mid-range version, and then it sort of escalates from there. Yeah. But the thing that I found really odd with the original series is that more often than not, we had the second version of each Digimon manifest first. Yeah. But if they got too hurt, they got reverted to the baby stage. Mm. <laughs> which... Between the pair of us, we thought looked a bit. It was poor design for each of them because it was literally just. Um, it was a. It looked like a scrotum, basically. That's the most polite way of discussing. I mean, I mean, just like for like a real life film, would you still kind of keep like kind of keep that concept, like the more damage you take, or would you just kind of think that's just a stupid idea and just completely bung that off? Because you came up with the idea of having. Um, I can't remember, was it from the original series that they could only stay at a certain state for a certain amount of time? Yes, the the idea I had for them digivolving up was that for each level they upped up to, they had a time limit for that version because it was too much of a strain for their bodies because obviously it's digital, it draws a lot of energy. Yeah. But... I mean, it could kind of work as, like, the idea that the baby version of them is, like, the least power-draining version, so they have to literally charge up to be able to manifest back into the second-stage version of themselves. Yeah, it's like kind of like think about like think about how YouTube videos are uploaded. You know, the big, the longer the video, the bigger the file. So it's kind mm. of like it's kind of that principle. You know, what uses up the least amount of you know energy and electricity, that kind of thing. So that's exactly kind of like the concept, which obviously would make sense for the digital monsters, hence digital. Yeah, exactly. But then <sighs> the other thing as well was the fact that with the original series, the kids were called the Digi Destined, and they each had their own little crest thing that e ended up ha somehow tying with the Digimon that they picked and thus transforming. Yeah. But I don't know if that could work. I mean, I it could, it could work as like a second movie where it could be like a power upgrade. So it's like a sort of built a bolster of power, so that it gives them a new form to manifest into. But in terms of them going from like mid range to set to level two, maybe level three at the most, we'd stick to the first movie. Yeah. But say for the second movie, if we could get a second movie. We could have like level four, level five have to need a boost in power, which is where the crests come into for them to like sync with the Digimon. Yeah. Because there was eight different versions of the crest and I never understood how it worked. All I remember is Ty and Orgamon was the crest of courage. But that's a bit of a vague thing anyway, because all the kids needed to have some courage to go into the digi world with these random creatures. Oh, for them to But I don't know, I think the issue is with all these anime shows, while I love them to bits, there are some very well crafted series. It does get lost in translation for us. Because yeah, obviously definitely. it means something in Japan, something so much more. So when it comes over to here in like the UK and America, they have to try and make it logical enough for us. But it ends up being lost in translation because we just end up being so yeah, confused. But then, it, but then it's going into the whole how do you make like digital monsters like in a real work in a realistic world? Like it's that's a tough gig. 
That's it. Um, I mean, the only it, other part. It is hard. I mean, I thought, like, when we were first writing this, I thought it was going to be, like, a bit easier. It turned out to actually be one of the most difficult ones we've ever written. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I don't know if Digimon is still going. Oh, I, I, mean, I doubt it. I very much doubt it. I mean, it's. I think it might have gone, like, five years ago, give or take. But at the end of the day, it's just... It's a more complex version of Pokemon, and Pokemon's already pretty damn complicated as it is. Yeah. And we were trying to sort of justify the logistics of how to like use the idea of how the main bad guy was getting about, like the idea that 5G was perhaps the thing that he was going to use to try and take over the world, and yeah. the whole idea of the worldwide wi-fi because like the idea that the whole world having one mass wi-fi but it's yeah it's trying like to you got like things like that like if you had like a whole worldwide world ugh, that's hard to say worldwide wi-fi you know obviously that affects everything it's connected to the stock exchange connected to like government websites it's connected to everything that goes into our day-to-day -day lives with like our phones businesses and so on so obviously money is for digital monsters is not a motivation at all. no but it's just if something drastic had happened it like for the concept of a worldwide wi-fi which is being talked about which i don't see happening in our lifetime mm. but having something like that it's good to take some degrees with it but having a one world wi-fi would have disastrous effects like for the digital age especially if we're talking about digimon well i think one thing we both said was the idea that we could have perhaps as an early nod within the film that the idea of the y2k event this ha mass hysteria idea back oh, in america yeah, the, end where... the end of 99 yes it was for those of you who may not be old enough to understand americans were so paranoid and so stupid <laughs> that they thought <laughs> on new year's eve of 1999 that all computers were going to go absolutely ballistic because it couldn't cope with the idea that the year was going to be 2000 and the Just whole because yeah, but we were thinking that we could use that concept that perhaps there is a, br a brief blip in technology, but the reason behind it was that it was the Devimon character manifesting slowly but shortly, and that's how it gained so much power over the years, because it took so long to transfer from country to country. Yeah. And it it's then trying to figure out how to take down such a mass thing because the idea of it being a virus and it being a, like a big digital virus, it's trying to I don't understand te technology enough to logistically give a good answer no. the only thing I could possibly think of which would be a really interesting idea is if they somehow coaxed the Devimon character into an old PC, like an old style Mac or something. Oh, what do you mean those great? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I used, to, I... I used to have one. We used to have those were like the main thing back in the day. Like kids will never know the struggle. Like and of then those things. No, they well, they're a piece of poop. Um, I had one for years. <laughs> but you could have that as an idea. So they trap it in an old piece of tech, and then to even go even more old school, you could have it trapped on a floppy disk. Yeah, do you, nobody remembers the days of floppy no, disks, but no. we do. <laughs> no, this is it. But it would give so much nostalgia to the idea of old tech, and it would be a good way of experiencing the idea of how far we've come the past 20 odd years. And plus, like, if you're going to have it for like a bit of a, um, I don't know, maybe like a teenage like audience, it introduces them to stuff which they've probably never seen or like, exactly. never even heard of. But other than that, I don't know what else to add to it. We've got like the main logistics to this, but it's I don't know whether to add in all of the kids and all of the like Digimon, or only do half the team in the first movie, and then they use this second one to bring in like the second half and go from there. Because yeah. there was what was it eight or was it? Six? I'm sure it was about eight different kids in the original series. I think it was eight. Yeah. Which is a hell of a lot of trying to justify 
eight different Digimon for eight different kids. I mean, like I say, you'd have to keep tying Ogomon. You'd have to keep his sister and her Digimon because she gets her Digimon roughly the same time as when he gets his. And then it's trying to figure out which other characters to add into it. Yeah. I mean, the one that always made me laugh is that there was that ginger girl that looked like a cowgirl, but she wasn't American, but they made her look American, like stupidly, like big bowler hat and all that. And her yeah. her Digimon digivolved into a cactus with boxing gloves. I never understood that. Because it Just went from because... a well, it went from a plant pot to a cactus with boxing. <laughs> 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 it's just, I don't know. It's such a weird series. I have to rewatch it at some point. I've missed watching stuff like that. Yeah, because it's been so long. But <sighs> it's trying to think of what else we can add into this whole concept of a movie i mean would you go as far as to say that it wasn't just devimon on his own that it could be like some person that came across him and tries to use him as a virus to start a war of some sort so it could be like a war against north korea or russia or something like that that is not not bad idea actually because i mean there's like what things are at disposal like because everything's going into a digital age and obviously like obviously like and obviously right now in current times because of the state of the world that we're in right now what's um what's gradually exiting the world which we've had for centuries physical money because it's going into digital now yeah you know? and for a human in this world that could be a pretty big motivation because it's that's trillions. I just had another thought. You know, you know co collapsing like like all the world stock exchanges. I just had another thought. What if they use the idea that Bitcoin was actually them trying to create their own way of like hacking into the system? Yes. So because obviously Bitcoin was a big massive thing like ages ago, and you could use the concept that Bitcoin wasn't like a something that a human designed but it could have been the digimon that designed it to try and hack into people's systems to try and tear down humanity yeah okay so we got that but it's <clears throat> i don't know what else to add really i mean it's not often we get through this like as quick as this we normally spend hours going through this yeah just like obviously we've got like the main principles but it's just it's trying to work what work out what the like what the end game is and it's just trying to make all this work we know how it works but we don't know how it works if that makes sense yeah um I, like we said we've already came across like the whole concept that the digivices would be beta tested versions of the apple watch or any sort of smartwatch. really it doesn't have to be apple but it could at least give them a way of tying into that. Um, double check my notes. Ah, the other thing we we're going to say is the idea of how we would manifest the dig digi world. Are we were going to say about using the old broadband sound? Oh yeah, just like as like you kids won't remember the old dial-up internet. It was it was terrifying. The sound of it. Oh, uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, like that. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrifying. Yes, but you could use that. I don't know. Would you use it as a way of like you could have a cutscene where you get a load of zeros and ones, and you hear that sound, and then piece by piece it forms into an actual world. Yeah. Or would you have like, it so... But all, like, all the codes and the algorithm would yes. actually form into, like, yeah. Like bushes, trees, mountains, and then you slowly but surely see all these random creatures or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, would you still do it that it was slightly pixelated, or would you have the digi world look really realistic once it's all rendered and loaded? Um, 
I still would not have it very realistic. So it's still like kind of alien tech, which is like probably, which is drastically different from what we have in today's world. So mm. I would still have it quite pixelated. You know, if you have you, you know, if you watch the making of um, like the making of video games, for example. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, there was one in particular which I remember when. Uh, God. This is how old we are. I remember when I remember when Spider Man Two on PlayStation Two came out. I remember, oh, God. That. and I remember watching the making of it when I was younger and seeing like you know it looks like a complete character like obviously in the game, but in the phases when they're working out the web swinging for Spider Man and everything, he's like all in separate like segments, and you can kind of see through him in the joints where they've not like kind of made those parts yet, and kind of like kind of like stuff like that. Like it's not fully rendered yet. I quite like that look. I don't like the fully rendered realistic version it could be maybe more realistic in a second film though which mm. would make a bit more sense they get a bit more advanced see one other thing i just had a random thought of as well is the fact that with a lot of games obviously you gotta have coding and make sure it works and obviously it doesn't always work because there's like random glitches and body launch uh, launches and stuff like that what if there's like a random moment in the like random little tidbits within the Digiverse where they try to communicate, but it goes wrong. So it's like when well, they're first trying to talk to one another and it's like, <laughs> it's like really glitchy yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's, and it's like one of them could sneeze and they sort of like short out and it glitches out and they go, Oh, I think I've got a virus. Yeah. <laughs> so little things like that, just to sort of, hint towards the nerdy side of things with the gaming i think would work so well yeah why not just have a bit of fun with it because i mean if the kids were to enter into the digi world as well would you add the concept that they get affected by the digi world or would they just randomly trope through things without it harming them because they're not actually digital i would go for the latter because you could have like the idea of that they they have to trace through like this really dangerous forest, or it could be like a, it's like a lava river or something that they have to hop across to try and get to a certain point. And all yeah. the Digimon like, ah, I can't do this. And then one of the kids just accidentally starts walking. It's like, but I can walk fine. And the Digimon like, huh? So they have to pick something like they have to pick them up or they have to throw no they could pick them up and throw them across the other side. <laughs> and one hits a tree yeah. and they just slide down slowly. You go, you're right. <laughs> yeah so it's gonna be a, like a bit more of a higher rated film but with a it's gonna have to have a lot of comedy <laughs> oh of course i mean it's it's video games at the end of the day you gotta have a little bit of funniness to it because otherwise it just doesn't work no i mean i love the idea of glitches in games but it's trying to add that to the characters oh. yeah but or maybe Maybe. What if, um, you know, we're just like with like how sophisticated games are now, like people are adding mods to games and stuff like that. What if gradually over time, like there's more systems being developed, how's like the Digimon and everything? What if people are creating mods for them? Yeah, which could then explain the new Digivolving for the second movie. Yeah, like mods and DLCs. Because the other thing as well, I just had a thought is obviously they only have certain powers when there's certain versions of them. Yeah. So you could have it that they actually find their abilities by mistake. Because I remember Ogamon's only power was Pepper Breath, and it was like a random fireball when he like it looked like he sneezed. So yeah. you could have that where he just randomly sneezes and then there's a fireball where he comes out of his mouth like, what the hell was that? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I I'm loving this. It's just trying to yeah, think of I like love this. I can't think of like like you say, you could add mods to them, like in the next movie or whatever, so it gives them the idea of how they digivolve into the next version. Yeah. <sighs> what else can we add to this before we shoot? Hmm. Yeah, you'd think this would be easier, but it's not. It's not. I mean, because this... it's been so long about since Digimon's been about, it's hard to keep it sort of with continuity. Because there's so many of them, just like Pokemon. But Pokemon's been going on for decades now, to the point where I think the only one that's still... I think there's only two that's probably still in it from the very beginning, which is Meowth and Pikachu. The yeah. rest of them have just literally been variations of the first 150 or 151. 
Yeah, they have. But like I say, I think the best way to end it is like he gets trapped in an old style computer and you have to have him saved on a floppy disk or something. Yeah, because like once you take that floppy disk out, all that data is just on that floppy disk. There's nowhere for it to go unless you actually plug it in again. Yeah, exactly. But what else can we add to this? Uh, like maybe, like maybe later on, I'm not sure how, but maybe later on, like some maybe criminal mastermind or something like that finds a way to import like the virus or whatever onto like a USB stick. Oh. Yeah. I mean, would you do it in such a way that it was all just one, like it all massed onto one memory stick? Or would it be that he was, the programming on him got split up? And because it's programming and it's but been tinkered with, it yeah, creates because like, like. Because you could have at the end of, you could have like at the end of the, uh, like the end of the film or whatever. That like the virus is kind of like maybe um, segmented off into like maybe I don't know. Let's just say ten U ten USB sticks, and they're placed like around the globe in different government agencies to make sure that nobody gets a hold of them. Mm. Okay, so that's so that can be to then bring back for the second movies like someone hunts down the separate pieces. But then you could always have it the fact that because the programming got split off, when it gets re-uploaded, it doesn't create just one main bad guy. It like splinters off onto different characters, so you get dark versions of the yeah. so Digimon. What, yes. Yeah, so what if like there's ten USB sticks, just for example? What if like like they like all of them are, like split off? But what if instead of like creating just one, like just like one bad Digimon out of just one? USB stick, like there's 10 variations of like the same virus. Well, I was going to say, because of the fact that, that he... Or is that a bit overkill? Well, I was going to say something different. Because of the fact that because the virus got split apart, it's not able to manifest as a full version of the virus, but it could implant itself on something else and make it into a dark version of the Digimon. Yeah. So then once all of 10 is uploaded to the Digi world, it can manifest back as the main virus. Yeah. If you see what I mean. Yeah, I, I like that idea. <sighs> Anything else we can add or should we end it? Because it's not a very long video, no, I'm afraid. I think, I, I think we've gotten our, all of our ideas out. And if anybody else has any, then please, it'd be much appreciated. <laughs> yeah, I mean... We've said this before, there's only so much nerding out that I can do and Jack can do because there's only the two of us. Like, we only know I'm so, so I'm much. I'm so glad we've got these ideas out because it was driving me mental. Oh, God, we yes. were writing, we were spending so long writing it out and now uh, it's just like, it's only been, what, half an hour it took us to say all this? But it yeah. took us three hours just to come up with it all. Yeah. But, no, I mean, like I say, we do appreciate any comments that people come up with. We love to hear everyone's thoughts and theories. We are slowly sort of delving away from the sci-fi stuff because I believe next week is going to be Jack's topic, which is... What's your topic for next week? I've gone brain dead. <laughs> ah, of course he has. He gets stage no, fright, no, so I'm afraid... No, I remember what it was. Uh, basically, I was kind of going into the idea with you about instead of like doing like whole things with like movies and like comic books that we've been doing for ages, what if we could maybe actually go into since we're talking about theories, obviously, it's named Theory Craft. Um, I love conspiracy theories, I absolutely love these things, and I love just really weird mental theories that people have come up with. Um, you know, maybe some things maybe to do with like real life crimes or maybe just crazy conspiracies such as like uh did uh an alien race help build like the Aztec world, all that kind of stuff. So I've just got to come up with one because there's so many which I just love to talk about. Um, but I'm gonna try and just write it down to just one simple easy one that we can both follow. And if anybody hops in the live chat that you can follow as well and also drop in your thoughts, ideas and opinions. So there we go, folks. We are delving a bit more into the weirder side of life, but we're, well, I'm Devonian, 
He's from Reading. We're used to being weird. So that's yeah, pretty much posh, it. Posh, this yeah. <laughs> yeah, posh boy. <laughs> <laughs> but that. Oh, God, we're going into the penguin now. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it this week, folks. It's a bit short and sweet, but this is what we do. We rant and rave about random poop, pretty much. So. We always enjoy hearing from you guys. Any thoughts and theories of your own, drop them down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. So, again, stay safe, stay home, and we'll speak to you all soon. Bye. See you later.